Okay, in the ECG course level one, still the very last part, last lesson in this fundamentals unit. I'm going to be on electrical and mechanical activity. And uh, several of the drawings and schematics that we're showing you, as well as a lot of the background information, comes from an excellent ECG book from Garcia and Holtz. One of them's a doc, one's a medic. And I uh, really like this book because it is divided into um, levels, and there's level one, level two, and level three. Um, and so we kind of took away that idea for our course. Uh, we don't uh, include this textbook with our paramedic textbooks. We don't think you need a separate ECG book for a paramedic program. However, a lot of people like to have one. They feel the need for that, uh, or someone gives them one. And then a few folks struggle with ECG stuff, and this is the first book that we have them turn to, um, particularly for level one. And then the cool thing is that if you become you know, a certified EKG geek um, and you want to continue learning about e EKG stuff because it really fascinates you, uh, this is an excellent source to go to. So Garcia and Holtz, I'm sure it's available on the usual sources. Um, not cheap, but worth the money that you pay for it. We think it's a pretty good book. Anyway, uh, into the fundamentals unit here. Uh, we've talked about the why we have a conduction system, then the waves, segments, and intervals, and now we're going to kind of bring it back together for electrical and mechanical activity, tie it up, and then there's one more quick hit lesson on where to put the wires so you can see the waves, the segments, and the intervals. This is electrical and mechanical activity. Reminding you of mechanical activity, the various chambers of the heart, the vessels coming in and going out, uh, general blood flow. And I'm telling you right now that if you could not trace a red blood cell's pathway through the circulatory system, including through the chambers of the heart, pulmonary artery, aorta, pulmonary vein, all that, if you can't trace that drop of blood around, that's going to come back to haunt you. So you really need to get that nailed down right now. And I am shocked surprised and disappointed at the number of folks that come to a paramedic class <clears throat> that cannot do that. Um, so work on that if you haven't gotten there yet. Electrical um, conduction system, the SA node, that's the primary cardiac pacemaker site. That's where the impulse starts. Then it spreads down throughout the whole conduction network uh, uh, across the atria and that's how things are supposed to work. The SA node's supposed to be firing first and fastest, and so the other pacemaker sites don't ever get a chance to fire. The impulse originates in the SA node, spreads to the atria, comes back to the AV node, doesn't jump across on some bypass track accessory pathway thing, comes back through the AV node, impulse is slowed, atria kick, ventricle stretch, Impulse makes its way into the ventricles. They are depolarized. They contract. That's how the whole thing is supposed to work. We can watch this happen on an EKG. We can see atrial depolarization during the P wave. We can see ventricular depolarization during the QRS. We can see the ventricles repolarize during the T wave. And hopefully you're starting to kind of get a feel for what's going on electrically and how it matches up to what's going on mechanically. Hey, here's another little tidbit, kind of a answer to a trivia question, but you know the National Registry likes to ask trivia. So when you take the National Registry trivia exam, you may need to answer, when does atrial repolarization occur? Hmm. Well, the P wave is when the atria depolarizes. But where's the wave for the atria repolarize? Because we see the QRS happening, and the ventricles are depolarizing. And then a little bit later, the T wave happens when the ventricles reset and repolarize. When do the atria get to reset? Well, the answer is it occurs during the QRS. But there's so much activity in the ventricles. The ventricles are large, and the electrical activity in there is large, and it kind of overshadows um, the atrial reset or repolarization. So a little trivia question there. Not on your A4L, but hey, you might try to remember that. Here's another look at the same thing. 
trying to find multiple ways here to depict this whole process and get you to uh, remember, learn, know forever the um, atria depolarizing and the P wave and then the PR is while that impulse is pausing and making its way through then the QRS happens when those ventricles contract and then you get that T wave reset in the ventricles. Here it is a different way one more time where's the impulse and compare it to the EKG and uh, this is a another although black and white uh, drawing or, or schematic I think it's very instructive if you kinda take some time so there's a companion PDF document that goes along with the screencast the PDF is m these slides and so you can look at these and stare at these for as long as you want you can print them out and draw pictures on them if you want uh, you can look at them while you listen to this screencast again if that helps you. Here's new and different. Now you've seen this drawing before, this schematic before, but it didn't have the rates listed on it. So the primary pacing site is the SA node. It should fire between 60 and 100 times a minute. Let's say 70 or 80. Then the AV junction is pretty much the backup pacer. Well, the AV junction is an area that includes AV node and the his bundle, the junction of the atria and the ventricles. And that's going to fire in the 40, 45, 50 range, somewhere like that. I like to think of it as 40 or so. I like to think of the SA node as 80 or so. The AV node as 40 or so. And then the Purkinje's and myocardial cells um, at, a, at less than that even. So you have multiple pacemaker sites, a backup to the backup to the backup to the backup because if someone doesn't create an impulse then the heart stops. So the heart has multiple backup pacer sites and this shows you the, the rates that they tend to fire at. So another little concept here. <clears throat> the Take the, uh, the AV node, for instance, 45 or 50 times a minute. It tries to pace, it tries to generate its own impulse about 45 or 50 times a minute. But how come we don't ever see that impulse? Well, we don't ever see that impulse because the SA node is firing first. And when the SA node makes an impulse and it comes flying through the AV node, the AV node resets and doesn't ever get a chance to pace. Only when the SA node is broken, not working, out of service, then the AV node sitting there waiting and no SA node impulse happens and the AV node says, cool, I get to actually be heard. And so it's ready to fire at 45 or 50, lower in the junction, a little bit slower than that, down the bundles, about that speed or even a little bit slower, and down in the, uh, in the ventricles, uh, even slower. So uh, just kind of a a uh, lot of information here, a very cool slide, um, gives you an idea that, you know, that really there's more than the standard three pacemaker sites that most paramedic programs teach. There's a lot of backup pacer uh, capability in there because it's so critical that an impulse get generated somehow. Here's one more shot to wrap this up at the impulse and depole and repole and how things are going um, and where the impulse is compared to the EKG. This is kind of spread out over two slides or to make it big enough for you to see. And then here it is all on one slide, a little different color coding system. Again, we're just trying to find multiple ways to show you the same thing that the electrical system is driving mechanical activity and keeping that mechanical activity synchronized. That's the best summary statement I can come up with. Here's a great app. I started off this lesson with a, a plug for Garcia and Holtz on the ECG book and I just don't think that every medic student needs to buy that. On the other hand, I think every medic student ought to buy this app got no money in this. Our program has no money in this. We don't get a discount for you. It is what it is. It's not the cheapest app that's out there. It is available. 
I'm told, for PC, for those poor folks out there that are still stuck using a PC. But it works great on a Mac. Uh, works great on iOS. Works absolutely fabulous on an iPhone or an iPad. We have it. We'll show it to you in class. We'll let you play with it as much as you want uh, in class. I just think you ought to buy it. I think it's um, really, really helpful for you. And I, I really don't feel comfortable taking videos of it and putting them in these screencasts because the screencasts end up on YouTube. And that's kind of like stealing these guys' intellectual property. But I'm going to make a huge plug for it. And what it does is it lets you see the mechanical activity of the animated pumping heart right next to the ECG complex. And, uh, you know, I, I'd been a medic for, I don't know, 20 or 25 years before I ever saw this app. And I'm telling you, things started to make sense at a deeper level once I saw it. It's absolute gold and you ought to get it. So, uh, electrical activity creates mechanical activity. And that's the, the big idea. And ECG in motion really shows it nicely.